Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and today we're going to talk about the most popular wine faults. I have worked as a sommelier on the floor for more than 10 years and often when I would offer a customer to taste the wine pre or serving it to the rest of the party, they would chuckle. If I don't like it, does that mean I can send it back? And here is the answer. There are two main reasons for sending wine back. First reason is if the wine is faulty. Sommelier gives you to try the wine to make sure it is in good condition. We do not want you to be drinking bad or spoiled wine. Sir, this is your wine, the Bouzeron 2015 vintage that you ordered. Before I reveal the other reason, let us discuss the most common wine faults. We can differentiate wine faults that occur at some stage during the winemaking process or into those that happen after the bottling, such as court wine or light strike. I am pretty confident that winemakers intentionally are not bottling spoiled or tainted wines. So, in this video, we will be focusing on those wine faults that can happen after the wine has been bottled and delivered to your dining table. Some of these wine faults or taints in small concentration can be perceived as complexity in wine or may not be detected at all and only when they pass a certain threshold, wine will be considered faulty. Probably the most common wine spoilage is TCA taint. Wine that smells of wet cardboard, dusty cellar, and its fruity aromas are muted is called corked wine. The most common element causing these off aromas is trichloroanisole, or TCA, and it is found in some of the natural corks. Because the wine is and should be stored horizontally so the cork always stays moist during the aging process, there is a risk that the cork taint could contaminate the wine. This is also one of the main reasons why sommelier will present the cork and give you to try the wine before serving it to the rest of the party. Your cork, sir? Premature oxidation can be caused by inappropriate wine storage or faulty closures, causing browning in all wines, whites, reds and rosé, as well as decrease in those fresh fruity aromas. At the extreme end of oxidation, wine will start to smell intensely of bruised apple, nuts and sherry. I have a friend who constantly keeps telling that the only thing that should smell of sherry is sherry itself. So if you don't have a sherry in your glass and it smells of sherry, that means it is a faulty wine and needs to be exchanged. Reduction can be caused during the winemaking, but it can also happen after the bottling, especially if the wine is sealed with a closure that limits oxygen transmission. There are also grape varieties that are more prone to reduction, such as Syrah and Sauvignon Blanc. The smell of reduction can be very unpleasant, such as boiled cabbage or onions or even rotten eggs. We may taste it. But this is also one of the wine faults that at very low levels can be perceived as minerality or maybe complexity in wine. My rule is, if it is unpleasant for you personally, it is considered faulty wine. I remember one wine shop where all the champagne bottles in colorless glass were taken out of their boxes and placed on the shelves next to a large window. It did look good and inviting, but increasingly high amount of those bottles later opened had lost their fresh and fruity aromas and they showed similar off flavors as with reduction. That can happen not only to those wines that are placed in direct sunlight or next to the windows, but also those that are under the artificial light. Some professional wine storage and fridge companies will offer temperature and even moisture controlled services, but then they will spoil it all by installing lights right where the bottles should be. 
Yes, that might look good and everyone can see that one Chateau Lafitte bottle, but just as direct sunlight, these lights as well will decrease the life of the wine. As with any other food product, contamination with physical elements is rare, but it can happen. These include insects or parts of the insects, human hair, or any other elements from the bottling line or even glass. I have worked with wine for 15 years now and I have never had a bottle of wine with foreign object in it, so that should tell you that it is extremely rare. Fermentation requires sugar and yeast. If the wine is missing one of these elements, it should be fine. But if there is some residual sugar and few healthy yeast organisms, unwanted fermentation can occur after the bottle is sealed. During this process, wine loses its clear and bright appearance and becomes cloudy and fizzy as CO2 has nowhere to escape. So, if your favorite off-dry rosé wine all of a sudden is cloudy, seems drier on the palate and has some fizziness to it, chances are that the second fermentation happened in the bottle and it is a subject for exchange. These are a few of the most common wine faults and if you notice them or the wine seems unpleasant to you, feel free to exchange that bottle of wine. And as I promised you before, there is another reason why you can send the bottle back when you have tasted it at the restaurant. If you order a specific wine out of the wine list and it is in fine condition, there is no reason for sommelier to exchange that bottle just because you don't like it. But if you ask your sommelier for a recommendation and you describe a specific wine style you would prefer and he or she brings totally different wine, this is where you can say, I don't like it, this is not what I wanted, and you can take it back. An example that comes to my mind is, let's say you wanted to have refreshing white wine, slightly aromatic, such as Riesling, and they bring you oak-aged Chardonnay with alcohol level of 15 degrees. Send it back. I hope you liked my video. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel as I will be posting new videos all about wine weekly.